the coronavirus is impacting because of its policies, our freedom, our mobility, all of the things that we have taken for granted in this country. And it is putting many, many people in positions of which we have never been before, both those making policies and judgments and directives, as well as those who of us are recipients of that. So all of these things are a new area, and great caution must be exhibited. But here are some questions we need to walk through. The fact is, when we get into such uncharted waters, it's exactly why at such times great wisdom and caution and discipline must be exercised by all people in positions of authority to make sure that policies that are made don't violate God's moral laws or the Constitution, which everyone elected took an oath to support and to defend. And those two work together, we know. But it's exactly these times that wisdom, reason, and sound judgment must guide all of our decisions, emotion, peer pressure, propaganda, all of those things must not be the determiner of our decisions. And there's a biblical principle that applies, and that's this. There is safety in a multitude of counselors. Now, that verse assumes that those counselors are, in fact, wise counselors. We want to look at that here right now because what's taking place in these policies are not only going to extend through the month of April for weeks, there's every reason to believe because of the projections that are the basis of the policies that they may well extend well into June and maybe beyond. We don't know, but it's more than just a day or two. So that's why it becomes so sort of critical. So, Jeremy, thanks. I want to get you back in here again. Just some comments on whether or not certain things that we are seeing that's raising the concern of many people is, in fact, a government walking a fine line or perhaps crossing a line. You pick any one of these three and comment. A pastor from Florida was arrested this weekend's example for meeting at their church. They came together. They met as normal. He was arrested. The Georgia Secretary of Health yesterday indicated that even drive-in churches where people sit in their cars was a violation. Now, the governor came out and said he didn't think so, but nonetheless, that's where that is. You mentioned Mayor de Blasio in New York City ordered all churches and synagogues shuttered on Sunday with threats of fines, and he even said permanent closure if they didn't do it, but yet I understand that bars are open, and he did not mention anything about the 100 mosques that are located in New York City, so it would appear as if the limitations are not being evenly done and so forth. Are we witnessing, Jeremy, a walking of the fine line in the middle or a crossing of the line from a constitutional perspective? Look, it's really hard to say much about New York, uh, New York City in particular, because they've just, they're just going through a horrible experience right now, the worst of it perhaps in the world. But at the same time, the mayor there has been careless with his words, and, and I want to just assume the best in him that he was actually just careless. And he wasn't intentionally uh, intending to be averse or adverse to host, uh, show hostility towards religion. But even if it was careless, it does nothing to bridge that um, necessary gap between church and state right now. He needs the churches and the synagogues and the mosques and or whomever else, frankly, is going to be willing to provide care and peace right now during this time. Uh, and that's not that's not happening right now. So that needs to be walked back. I, I'm sad that it hasn't. And I'll tell you this, if he does follow through in that threat to permanently close houses of worship, not only will that not succeed, First Liberty will be the first in line to, the, to uh, work against that. Uh, but going back to some of these other issues that are out there as well, the drive-in uh, uh, church idea, uh, I, I'm disappointed to hear that from the health department in Georgia. And if there are churches that are planning on doing something like that, Right now, as long as they're following the CDC guidelines, the White House's recommendations, I, I think that's perfectly acceptable in a creative use of, of church services. And so if, if they're running into problems with that, I hope they'll give us a call at First Liberty. Go to our website at firstliberty.org and let me know. We may be able to take some action related to that. And then the last thing I'll say about the, the pastor in Tampa, number one, I'm glad that this is a minority report. Uh, most churches in the country are complying cheerfully, I think, with the public health requests that are out there. And those who have not have been regretful that they did not. Uh, so by and large, don't buy any narrative that is being sold to you that the churches are the ones that are spreading this wildly around the country. That just doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, but at the same time, I, I think we can all be tempted 
to engage in a bit of defiance right now. And that may just become be coming out of something of not only our precious freedoms, but we're a bit stir crazy in our own homes right now. And I understand that. Uh, let me just say it this way, and I think I want to say it forcefully but carefully. That right now is the time for prudence, not defiance. Let's be prudent in our actions here. And it's right for us to rely upon some of this uh, data and at least some of the guidance that's coming out of the White House and the CDC to say, let's let's take it easy, engage the social distancing, maintain our uh, isolation as much as we possibly can to get on the other side of this this virus. That's the best thing to do for love of fellow man. Uh, right now is not the time to thump our chest as to what rights we do and don't have. The Constitution exists still. And where there are uh, mistakes being made, they're, they're, te- they're, they're usually very minor ones, and they're being adjusted. Look, McKinney, Texas, right a, a couple miles from where I'm sitting right now, uh, made a mistake in their order. We sent them a letter. That same day, they changed it. Uh, Frisco and Allen have similar issues that they're dealing with, and they're making adjustments and changes. And not only that, but the Attorney General of Texas has noticed this and said, hey, wait a minute, guys, we need to fix this. And he's issued new guidance to the churches. Everybody's just trying to do their best right now in something of a modern, unprecedented situation. Let's measure out the grace that we want to return to us as well, to those who are just trying to do their best to account for public health, remind them where they need to make corrections, but expect that they actually will make those corrections and and abide by the Constitution.